Alrighty, we're here for bank row challenge number six. About to get right into it, buying it for 300. We're getting close to getting to this uh, 10K. So let's jump right to the hands and let's see what we can get going. Alrighty, here we go with another one. We're starting off the first hand with king queen offsuit under the gun. I'm going to bump this up to 15. It folds around to the small blind and big blind and they both decide to call. The flop is pretty good. It is king jack eight. I know that I have the best hand. Um, there's 45 in the pot, so I'm going to bet half of that. That's 20, and they both actually call. I'm not concerned. I still know I have the best hand, and it's a great turn card, six of diamond. On this card, I'm going to size up slightly. I'm going to bet 45. Um, they both decide to fold, unfortunately, and the big blunt actually says that he had a weak king, but he thought that my kicker was better. So if that's true, that's a great fold. Um, either way, hand number one, we get the pot coming our way. Nice little pickup. And on to the next. All right, so moving along, we looking down at Ace Jack of Diamonds. Very pretty hand in the small blind. There's an under the gun raise to 12. There's one call before it gets to me. And I decide to bump this thing up to 55. Um, a lot of people would just call a hand like this, but. Like I said, in lower stakes poker, you got to be aggressive and you got to learn to put in three bets without having kings, queens, or aces and ace king. So ace jack suited for me was a good candidate here, has good playability even if I get called. But um, I ended up taking it down because everyone folds and I'm very happy with that result. Just throwing that in there just to kind of show you some of the plays in between the big pots that increase your win rate all right started recording this hand a little bit late so i'll get you a breast on the pre-flop action we have ace king off on the button there is a straddle and there was one straddle limp and so when it gets to me i bump it up to 20 although i think that's a really bad raise um seeing that there's a straddle and a limp i should be raising this up to about 30 or so but either way they both decide to call and we're off to a flop which actually is pretty good it is Jack Jack King, and so I decide to go ahead and bet 20, and the player to my right decides to call the cutoff. Now, the turn is an 8, and in no way do I think that he has a jack, but he doesn't have that much left, so if he has a jack, he has a jack. So I decide to go ahead and bet 45, and he calls, and the river is an ace, and he lead jams for only 13 left. So, of course, I'm thinking he must have a jack here. So, I call, and he does not have a jack, actually. He shows he has queen 10. So, he flopped open-ended, chased it on a paired board, and hit his straight. But it's all right. It is what it is in live poker. You got to take the good and the bad. But um, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't too happy after seeing that. But next hand. All righty. So, we're not so happy about how that last hand went, but I get dealt my favorite pocket pair, pocket 10s. We raise it up to 15 under the gun, and we get three callers behind. So, the flop comes with three overcards, but it's the best group of overcards you can see. It is king, queen, jack, so we flop open-ended. And the small blind checks, I decide to check, and the two players behind me check as well. So now the turn is an eight of spade, bringing in a backdoor draw. So now small blind checks again, and so now I know that I can definitely steal this hand. Um, seeing as that I was second to act on the flop, if the two players behind me had anything, they would have bet it. It's not like they were just checking to the razor and I'm in late position. So I know that they are capped to having close to nothing. So when I bet 40, they both fold, but the small blind sticks around. And so the river is the seven of spade. And so he checks. And this is a dicey spot when he calls... He could be having the front door draw, which was clubs, or he could have hit his back door spade draw. But I know that in live poker, if he would have hit his flush draw on the river, he would have led instead of check to me because this goes check, check a lot. And so I have two tens. I'm blocking ace 10 for the nut straight and also nine ten for the other straight. So I decide that I'm going to turn my hand into a bluff. So I rip it all in. It is 125 effective, and I mean, he goes into the tank. He's tanking, he's tanking, he's tanking, and 
I'm thinking he's definitely going to put in the fold. This is the same guy from the last hand, by the way. So I really just want to stick it to him. I know he has a better hand than me. And as time goes by, he's just looking like he wants to fold. But then he just starts thinking. He says that he's blocking what I'm trying to represent. And so I'm not liking that. But I don't know if he's going to put the pieces together. And um, unfortunately for us, he actually sticks in the call. I tell him nice call and I flip my hand for pocket tens and he shows that he has ace king with the king of spade. So I guess he was blocking ace 10 and blocking the backdoor spade draw. So I'm not mad at it. Um, I thought this was a pretty good play. Y'all leave this in the comment. Y'all think I should have just checked it back or do y'all think that that was a pretty good bluff attempt seeing that he tanked with top pair top kicker for probably about three minutes or so. So y'all let me know in the comments. Um, this one sucks, so now I'm actually on monkey tilt, as you will see in the next hand. All right, so that hand sucked. The same guy who hit his straight calls my bluff, so he's just owning me at this point. So in the very next hand, I mean the very next deal, we have 10-3 of spades in the big blind. One of the tighter guys, he raises on the button to 18. There's one call right before me, the small blind, and... Normally, this is always just a fold, but when you just lose a big pot and you're steaming, of course, you're going to make bad decisions. And you're thinking, well, if I hit, I'll probably be able to get paid off. And so I call. Definitely not a great call. I never claim to be Mr. GTO. So as played, I call. And we go off to a flop, which comes 9-3-3. Three, three. Yes. So I have to look at my cards again just to make sure that I have trips. And we do. So this is great. I check, and the pre-flop raiser decides to bet out for 30. So the small blind in between us decides to fold, and now we're going heads up to a turn, which is the jack of diamonds. So now there's two flush draws out there. So I'm not going to do nothing stupid. I'm just going to check, and he actually does something that I was not thinking he would do. He jams all in for 250 or so. I can't get my chips in any faster so he would never do this with pocket jacks if he turned a big full house. So I know that he's just trying to protect with an overpair. So, I mean, it's, it's, I have trips, okay? It's nothing to think about. I call, and he shows that he has pocket queens. Um, the river is a brick, and we are good. And now I go from being stuck a bunch to now I'm up about 75, and now this guy's on monkey tilt, and we're going to play another hand versus him right now. Okay, so in the next hand, we are looking down at the weapons of mass destruction, pocket aces, the rockets. There is two limps in front of me, and I raised to 20. My only customer is the big blind, the same person that had the queens. And actually, this flop comes with the queen, followed by a jack and a nine. So... This is a very dangerous board, and so I decide to check after he checks to me, and then so we're off to a turn. The turn comes to 7. So he bets 17, and I'm definitely not going to be putting in a raise here. I don't think it accomplishes much. It folds all his BS hands, and I'm only going to get action from two pair or better. So I just decided to stick in a call, and now the river is the worst card. It is a 10. So he has all the two pairs, all the straights, everything imaginable that beats me. So he actually checks, and now I can't wait to check back. And I show my aces, and they're good. So I know it wasn't like a big, big pot with aces, but it just is good to get the same guy back with queens. And right after this hand, he decides to table change, says he doesn't like me, but it is what it is. Anyways, next hand. So in this hand, we have a decent hand under the gun. We have King Jack off. Um, you can definitely make an argument for being in such an early position to just go ahead and fold it at a full 8 max game. But we decided to raise it up to 15 as played. And the plus one behind me decides to call. And so there's a small blind. So we're off to a flop where I don't hit anything at face value. It comes queen 10 3 with two hearts. We are open-ended. But when it checks to me, I decide to check it and see what my opponent wants to do and he puts out a bet of 21. The small blind looks at his cards, thinks about it and thinks that's a good price to peel. Um, some of these players could definitely have a flush draw so I'm probably not drawing to all the cleanest outs in the world 
and the board just gets even worse when the turn is a three of heart. So now the flush draw does complete, and so when small blind checks, I check, and the plus one decides to put it at a bet of 26. Now it's a slightly bigger bet than the flop, but as far as the proportion, it is a lot smaller than the flop bet. And so when the small blind folds, I'm thinking that he's probably not weighted towards flushes, so I do contemplate deciding if I put in a raise, would he fold? Um, I think about it for a second, and then I elect not to and just lay it down. And he shows that he has king-queen with the king of heart, and so he definitely was not going to fold that hand. So it's a good thing I decided not to, but now we are off to the final hand of the session. Let's see if we can make some shake. All righty, so we are in the final hand of the session. We are looking down at five, six of clubs, my favorite suit. There are four limps ahead of us, so when it gets to me, I could be putting in a monster squeeze with a pretty suited connector, but I just decided to check my option, and we're going five ways to the flop, which comes ace, four, seven, and we're open-knitted here, but still, when small blind checks, I decide to check, and it checks all the way through. And the turn, now comes the four of clubs. So now, to go along with the open-ended, we now have a flush draw. So I think this is a strong enough hand to lead out for 10, and when it gets to the button, he decides to put in a raise to 30. Now he's a 2-5 rag. I'm pretty sure he thinks he's pretty good. But regardless of all of that, I'm hoping he has a four. Because if I spike my flush or if I spike the straight, I'm definitely going to get max value out of him. And so I stick in the call. And the river is the nine of clubs. So we hit our flush. And so when I check, I'm thinking he's going to put in a bet with his four. But then he checks back and he shows that he just had... 8-3 offsuit so he was just trying to steal it and that's how we win the last pot of the session and so we're going to go to the outro and tally up the total and see how we looking all right so that's it for that session in the game for 600 out of the game for 750 i only played for about two hours had a couple things i had to handle but um that's still a profit of 150 in two hours almost 75 hours exact that's gonna be right here that now brings the bankroll up to this amount uh i forgot off the top of my head but um appreciate y'all watching y'all make sure y'all like comment and subscribe we're going to finish this bankroll challenge by the end of august once again as always appreciate y'all holla